The funniest thing about my training sessions right now is that the hardest bit of my training session is the very first set. So the very first set I usually do, I've done it once before, <clears throat> this is kind of like the new approach I'm doing, is 50 reps with an empty barbell. And I know that doesn't sound like much and I didn't think much of it um, until I decided to do it. It is extremely difficult. Um, it kind of reminds me of the 20 reps squat program in milk. Um, where you kind of have to stop and breathe through it. Um, now, obviously, you know, it would be a lot harder if you added weight, but because this is the first thing you do when you walk into the gym and just put the barbell on your back and go for it, it's kind of like, you know, your body kind of is waking up as you're uh, doing this set, so it's, it's, it's extra difficult. So anyway, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna do a set of uh, 50 with a 20 kilo barbell, and uh, we'll get it on the road. Today's gonna be the volume day, I guess. Um, I'll be doing a whole lot of reps. So 50 with the barbell, 40 with 40 kilos, um, 30 with 60 kilos, 80 with 20, sorry, 80, kilo, 80 kilos with, uh, for 20 reps, and then 100 with, uh, for 10. Um, when I do all of that, the easiest, by far, the easiest test is the 100 uh, for 10, by far. There's something about reps, man, it just completely murders you. I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one. I know some of you guys have said the reps are, the, you know, Cardio is really hard. <clears throat> Some of you guys have said this is actually cardio. My, uh, my quads are pumped like anything. I brought up the example the other day about cyclists and that German dude. If you type in German cyclist quad into Google, you, the first thing you're gonna see is this guy, which I forget the name again. He's uh, disproportional uh, size on the quads. He just looks stupid how big his quads are. And trust me, he doesn't do a set of five or a set of 10. He does a set of 100 basically because when you're cycling you're not counting reps right you're just going for distance or you're, you're you know racing around a circle he's one of those aerodome uh, i looked it up i've forgotten again what's it called the cyclists that go in circle like in a stadium <clears throat> so not a road cyclist one of those quads are massive like the guys are basically sprinting for several minutes at a time um so humongous squats i encourage you to see that and uh, there's some footage on, on, on the web of, of him actually uh, doing squats and he can squat like 500 pounds for like 10 reps or 20 reps or something like that so the guy can squat as well anyway I am currently testing this notion about what the best range is for hypertrophy slash strength in my opinion you build strength as you build hypertrophy um, the only difference in the rep schemes is that with lower reps you're basically training how to lift lower reps. Um, I don't think the best way to go about hypertrophy training is to do a set of 10 or 8 to 12 what they say. I think it's beyond that. Um, now we're all different, we all have kind of different muscle fibers and whatever um, but I've trained for a little bit now to understand that my body doesn't respond, respond all that well with that stuff. Um, breathing squats, you know, mega squats, you know, big sets, mega sets, whatever you call them where you kind of have to catch your breath mid-set and continue to do a couple more reps. Those are the best um, sets for me when it comes to growth anyway. My, my quads, I, I can't recognize my quads and it's been only a few days so uh, I encourage you to try it. Anyway, let's get the show on the road and you guys can see what it looks like to do 50 reps. <clears throat> I'll go in this direction to change it up a bit. <clears throat>
I think that's 50. Might have lost count. Oh man. Man, the pump you get in the quads. There's nothing that I've done in the past that's done the same thing. Oh, man. When I do sets of five to 10, you know, you have to use relatively heavy weight, you know, to get that stuff, you know, up to 10 reps. The trouble with the, that stuff is that your body's clever, man. Your body tries to take the path of least resistance, you know. So if you're trying to bring up your quads and you're always working with reps of five to 10, that's still pretty heavy weight. It's still pretty heavy weight to train weaknesses because your body is, is probably thinking, I need to get this weight up. To get this weight up, I'm not going to use the weak muscles because they're too weak. I have to use the stuff I'm already good at for me, the glutes. So for me to shift the blame or the work onto the quads, I need to really use a weight that's so light that even weak muscles can do the weight. So when we're talking about one rep maxes and taking percentages of that, I think it depends on how weak your weaknesses are. Because if your weakness is really weak, your weakness might not be able to take even 50% of your one rep max. You see what I'm trying to say? So you can't, your body as a whole system, when it's all in unison, is one rep max. At what point of your one rep max can your weaknesses take over the movement? So when I'm squatting the barbell, I feel all the tension in my quads. When I squat five rep maxes and above, even 10 rep maxes, I feel other musculature work. I never feel a, a pump quad, a quad pump. And that's because my quads are really weak and it's on my primary path for my body to take. So if you're trying to engage some of your weaknesses, consider this. I, I really think you should consider this type of uh, thinking with it. Um, I've played with all sorts of different things and I feel going with an empty barbell is by far the best. Every kilo that I put on the bar after that takes me away from training the weakness. Uh, to an extent, right? I'll put on 40 kilos on the bar now. I know, 40 kilos, big deal. Um, but even that, I'm gonna take to 40 reps and I'm gonna feel my quads again. I'm not feeling anything else, man. Like, I'm not feeling any other muscle group except the quads, it's purely the quads. And that's what I want, I wanna bring up my quads. I want my squat to, pre to be predominantly driven by the quads because that's gonna favor me staying upright. One of the reasons why people's hips shoot up, and I think the, the primary reason, is because your quads are really weak, and so your posterior chain, your body's smart, man. Your posterior chain kicks in to take over the load, to get it up. Um, your quads can't even contest in that rep because it's too heavy for them. So it just takes a secondary roll, right? Um, so I want to squat really upright, kind of the only kind of looking squat. And so in order for me to excel in that, I have to have my quads be the strong point of my squatting, not my weak point. So this is the thing about training heavy weights. Um, if you go day by day, week by week, month by month, always training with a heavy, heavy weight, imbalance is going to be created because really you have no time to train the weaknesses, you know. Um, your body's always kind of lifting weight that basically can't mess around with. It needs to really just get the weight up. Um, this is why I think really light weight for lots and lots of reps, he's gonna highlight some of the weaknesses in your body. <clears throat> I truly believe that. And I think, I think that's what's happening with me right now. The reason why I'm so uh, happy about this type of training is because I really feel my quads getting engaged. Unlike any other time in my training. You know? um, and I feel like this is really gonna 
you know, bring, bring about some strength. Um, because if I take my weakness and I improve it by 10, 15, 20%, what's it going to mean when I put my weakness back into the mix with my strength? It's always going to be, obviously it's going to be a lot better, isn't it? All right, I'll go 40 on the bar now. Let's get to work again. Oh, and by the way, these training sessions don't take long at all. I remember, you know, training, you know, 10 sets of three, 10 sets of two. Fuck. You know, you do a couple of minutes between sets. At least a couple of minutes. If, you tr if you're trying to train the technique and the strength gains, you know, perfect your power, um, you really have to take up to five minutes. The whole training session takes like two hours, man. It takes such a long time. With this stuff, you bend yourself out in three sets. All right, let's get this 40 for 40. Fifteen minutes in, I feel like I'm dead already. Oh. The funny thing about this type of training is you really feel like you're training, you know what I mean? Like, it feels like hard work, it really does. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, I used to do a lot of running back in my teenage years to play basketball. You know, it's all about running and getting fit. You'd go for like a 5, 10k jog and you'd push it, you know what I mean? Like you go for time. And the moment you stop and your kind of breathing settles down. And I've heard this from other people as well, runners. The endorphin release, man. It's like your body gets high off the oxygen. 
there's an endorphin release. And so when I finish these type of sessions, I feel kind of like that. Like I feel high, man. I feel so happy. I feel so good. I feel like I've accomplished something. A lot of the time when I was doing, you know, 90% kind of training, you know, like doubles, triples, singles, that type of stuff. Obviously I'll work up to a max training session, training weight, and then I will back off to like a double or triple or five or whatever I used to do. Um, and I tried everything. A lot of the time you, you kind of finish, number one, there's no pump. There is no pump. You just feel tired, you know, like systemic fatigue. Um, you feel drained. Uh, but you don't feel a pump. You don't feel like, oh yeah, the quads are really, are really kind of tired. Or, you know, my, my glutes are really tired. Nah, man, it's none of that. You just feel tired. It's kind of the central nervous system fatigue. With this type of training, I finish the session and I walk out and I'm like, God damn, I'm fried. As in, my quads are fried or this muscle's fried. But overall, I feel kind of high. As I said, like I feel the endorphin rush. It's just, it's a bizarre. Bizarre thing, completely bizarre. One type of training feels like you're, you're dead, you need to go to sleep, the other one is kind of, you feel energetic, you wanna go do stuff. Although you can't, because your wheels are gone. So, mind you, this type of training, I haven't really done much else. Um, I'll do good mornings, maybe twice a week, three times a week, depends on the work schedule. Um, and then uh, I've also thrown in some pull-ups for my shoulder. Um, by the way, I've kind of stopped doing front squats for the time being. I want to let my shoulder kind of recover a little bit with the pull-ups. So really, I'm doing only three exercises. Um, if you were to do this type of training and do other shit, you, you'd be very careful, to, you know, implementing that, like maybe ease into it. Um, just like with everyday squatting, like when you introduce something, such immense volume, you gotta, you know, take, take uh, your recovery points and put more points into this thing. Otherwise, you're not gonna progress. So really, I'm only concentrating on the squats and then every other day, you know, do a pull up or a, or you know, good morning. And the good mornings are really like 40 kilos for five sets of 20, just to get the hamstrings, uh, glutes going a little bit. As I said before, it's all about balancing the glutes out with the quads and whatnot. Knee health, hip health. All right, let's put 60 on the bar. Oof. So 60, we're gonna do 30 reps. It's crazy, sounds crazy. You really feel muscular fatigue or muscular failure when you're doing this, this type of training, man. Like you really feel like there's nothing left in the muscle. Like, I keep saying it, you feel like you're actually training. I think we have a lot to learn from the bodybuilders. Um, obviously, I've said this before and I'm sure most of you guys also know, when you're talking about bodybuilding, you know, you have to be, be careful where you take advice from because obviously the steroids ruin everything. If, uh, if a natural guy is trying to do a steroid workout schedule, no, nothing's going to happen. Maybe even injury. So, I guess mean, you could say the same thing for powerlifting. I mean, there's probably just as many drugs in powerlifting as there's in bodybuilding, um, but just general theories of bodybuilding, there's a lot to be learned there. I've said this in the past, um, rarely, rarely, rarely do you see somebody that's been in bodybuilding for four or five years and has a really weak bench press. Why? It's because bodybuilding is all about developing kind of like all the upper body. Whereas a lot of powerlifters, they're like, oh, I just need to get better at the bench press, so I just do the bench press. And the volume between the two are vastly different. Like the bodybuilders do incline, decline, dips, pull-ups, this type of row, that type of row. They do a million different exercises to target the body, upper body. And so obviously there's more volume there and usually that volume translates to more strength. Whereas the powerlifter, he's like, you know, worried about fatigue here, fatigue there, I'm doing deadlifting, squatting, benching. And so, you know, there's a lot of under-training going on, I feel like, in powerlifting. That's what I'm trying to say. Whereas in, in bodybuilding, they work with less, like, weight um, and they just get the bloody volume in. And I truly believe, out of all the things that I've seen, so far in my life in training, volume is the biggest driver. 
Um, just get the damn volume in, whatever, however you want to do it. You want to do a set of 50, a set of 40, whatever, whatever, just get the volume in. Obviously, the higher weight you go, the more implications there are to the central nervous system and whatnot. This is, uh, I call this cheap training because it doesn't really cost the central nervous system anything. The weight's so light, you're just getting the pure volume in. All right, we're in shot, we are. All right, 60 for 30. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. Oh man. Oh fuck. He comes in nausea. He probably doesn't look as bad on camera, but I'm hurting right now. <sighs> One other thing that I mentioned in the last video, core. Cool. What's better to do? A set of 50 squats or some crunches? Where's the body working more? Can't even keep my legs bent. <sighs> right now I'm feeling my lower back. Uh, fatigue, my core, front core, anterior core is fatigued. Uh, so after this I'll do 80, then I'll do 100. And then by the time I get to like any sort of decent weight, for me, like I think last time I did up to 70%, my core is just fried. My core is really unstable. I don't feel confidence under the bar. This is the other thing with this training. Your core gets a whopping, whopping, whopping workout. Man. 
Anyway, I, th I feel like the worst is over now. 80 for 20, I think, is a lot doable, a lot more doable than anything over 20 murders me, man. It's not gonna be easy, but it's not gonna be as hard as doing 60 for 30. No way. All right, let's put the weight on the bar. Oh man, just standing up is a, is a rep. So we're 26 minutes in. All right. Wherever I look, man, and I've been looking at a lot of videos, wherever I look about, you know, doing hypertrophy training, it's always 8 to 12. 8 to 12, 8 to 12, 8 to 12. Everyone recommends that. Who the hell came up with that shit? It's not like sports science is a, is a strong field of research. I mean, who cares up with this shit? And everyone subscribed to it. Everyone's doing the same shit. Yeah, that's what the research suggests. But I see people all the time. You know, some people, not everyone obviously, the majority stick to 8 to 12. But I see people here and there doing all the time reps over 20, 30, 40. I said George Lehman in one of the videos previously, and one of you guys said, oh look, you know, steroids, blah, blah, blah. Uh, absolutely. And he's even said he takes steroids. Um, but, I'm gonna put it to theory. I'm gonna put this theory to the test. That's what I'm doing now. I wanna see what the results are gonna be. You know, a few weeks of this type of training. Um, in the immediate results are that my quads have just blown up. And yeah, sure, you could say that a lot of that hypertrophy is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. It's not myofibrillar hypertrophy, meaning that the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is kind of that fluid retention that people talk about. It's all that sugar, the glycogen, it's kind of all the, all the, all the water, I guess, surrounding the muscles in between the fibers. You know, making the muscle more resistant to, you know, uh, muscular endurance kind of uh, training, um, because there's more kind of fuel really accessible to the to the cells. The myofibrillar, I always have trouble saying that word. Too many L's and too many R's in the same word. Um, that type of training aims to train the actual fibers. Um, you know. Uh, so, tension trains the myofibrillar, so weight, um, whereas the sarcoplasmic hypertension is trained more with this type of training where you're breathing through the set, it's a prolonged set, you, you, you're losing, you're using lighter weights. Um, bodybuilders tend to do the water retention type training. Um, I think you should do a bit of both. Um, look at the soccer players. I've also been watching a, a bit of soccer lately because of the you know English Premier League is back now, and uh, I'm sitting back and I'm watching the game and, and I've seen a couple of the dudes with these big ass squads. I'm like sitting back and I'm like, there's no way that's from doing set of five. No way. I feel there are more people out there with smaller legs doing strength training then there are people uh, with smaller legs using this type of training. Um, and if we go on the premise, on the fact that a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? True hypertrophy is not this, man. It can't be. You don't need a research study to tell you that. You don't need an article to tell you that. Just do a set of 15, you'll see what I'm talking about, man. Your legs get pumped. Immediately. One set. I don't need no damn article to tell me that this doesn't work. Some people tell me it's cardio. Bullshit, it's cardio, man. My legs are pumped. That's not cardio, man. I've done cardio. 
All right, let's do 80 for 20. Let's do this. Whoa. You know you're in trouble when just standing up off a chair. He's like a rep. All right. Oh. Oh. Oh man. I can see why people don't want to do this training. It's so hard. Oh. Oh. Brutality. I can see why people wouldn't want to train like this. It's too damn hard, man. I'd rather sit on the couch. It's war. All out war with your mind. It's all about that self-talk. You're mid-set, you're done, and you gotta say to yourself, now, nah, come on, a rep at a time. <laughs> That's why running is really hard, because all you wanna do is stop. Your body's telling you to stop. Up here, this is the thing that keeps you going. I already feel like I'm getting better at this training. It's only been a few days, few training sessions like this. And I feel like my body's trying to catch up. Man, the first time I did this shit. Like it took me an hour to get to this point. One hour. After the barbell, 50 rep with the barbell. I was walking around the backyard for 15 minutes. Jelly legs, pure jelly. Oh. 
So now I can already tell you the training is going to get easier because I'm doing high weight, lower, lower reps. Already it's easier. I'm used to this shit. You know, whenever I don't have to huff and puff and battle lactic acid, I'm good. So 100 kilos for 10 is going to be a piece of cake compared to the previous sets. Absolutely. I feel that way. Now, let's do a set of 10. I'm feeling my lower back pumped, the erectors. All the way up to about here, all of this. Real good pump there as well. What I'm feeling is quads and lower back right now. Nothing else really. I feel my duct is pumped, but it's not like cramping, like my back is kind of cramping right now. I feel like I've got a mad anterior pelvic tilt. Like my body just wants to stick my ass out. The quad's pulling down, the erectors are pulling up, just shifting me into that anterior pelvic tilt. All right, let's get 10 out of here. See, it wasn't hard. I sort of tame this piece of cake. Let's do a set of five at 120 now. And there's obviously a, like a tipping point with this. When you're crossing over between high reps and low reps, you know, low reps to, sorry, low weight to uh, high weight, the graph is like that, right? Somewhere in the middle is gonna feel kind of all right. You know, 100 kilos for 10 reps, 120 for five, not bad. When I go 140 for one or two, okay, so now we've got tension problems. There's no metabolic problems anymore. That's kind of passing because it's such low reps, but the weight's getting heavier. And when you put in already fatigued muscles and you've lost a bit of strength there, now, now all of a sudden 140 kilos is a lot of tension to overcome. So you're hitting both spectrums. Obviously you're not hitting a lot of weight because you've pre-fatigued yourself. Um, but you know, you're building, you're building hypertrophy strength for the next session. It's 
So I'm giving you guys this video. You can see exactly what I've done. Uh, you know, 40 odd minutes in. I'll uh, keep it rolling. You guys will see the next few sets. I imagine 160 is going to be my top set. I don't think I'll be able to get any more weight up. But we'll see. We'll see. The core is going to be the limiting, limiting factor. Just like the other day. I hit 160 for one and I was like, hmm. Very unstable at the bottom. Very not sure of my positioning. Call it quits there, man. Nothing to talk about. All right. Let's get the show on the road with this 120. One twenty for That's all right, no problem there. Let's put 140. Ooh, I need to have a seat. <laughs> All right. Now 140, I'll do for one. I'll do once from now on. We're getting into the heavier weight. Don't want to mess around with that. Fatigued core, heavy weight, asking for trouble. What a hard session, man. There you go, 44 minutes. I feel like this is proper, proper training. I know bodybuilders always talk about, you know, the sessions not being longer than an hour because there's no rest, you're just banging out sets, you know. I know with powerlifting training, some of the programs I've done in the past, two hours, man. Happened quite a few times, quite a few times, two hour sessions. Because the whole idea is you're, you're, you're moving one to five reps, heavy weight, takes a long time to recover, uh, which is interesting because this type of training is harder, you know, metabolically. It's just, you know, when you're doing five sets of five at 80%, you're not hurting, but you just, your, your, your energy just disappearing. All right, 140 for one. I have to concentrate on my core here. Really suck the breath in and tense up. Rack is almost harder than the rep. 
walking it backwards. Just easy, I don't know. Heavy weight for me is easy. 160 now, this is gonna be a test. See if I can maintain my core. It's really easy to uh, squat when your quads are really pumped. You feel like there's a, there's like a spring at the bottom because your muscle just wants to extend naturally from all the blood pumped in. So <laughs> getting out of the hole seems to be easier. Alright, let's not mess with it. Let's go 160. We'll go this way so I don't mess up my rack again. One six is alright. Let's go one seventy. Seems to be a change in weather. Might be some thunder now. One sixty moves all right. Let's see one seventy. Not a lot of rest. I don't feel like I need to. Alright, that's it guys, it's getting really heavy, really hard to control the weight at the bottom. Low confidence with the weight on my back when I'm already exhausted, so there you go. That's exactly what I'm going to do every, every other day in my training sessions. The in-between sessions are going to be kind of like this, a quarter of this, uh, where I do a little bit of volume at the bottom and then I uh, concentrate a bit on the top end a little bit. Anyway guys, that's it for today, catch you tomorrow.